futuristic utopia. I mean, this neighborhood's fine. If this was just some random street in Irvine, it wouldn't be such a big deal because there's stacked underground parking lot, high density of employment. The problem is, is that the buildings were not built to fulfill demand. It was built to stimulate it. And that's kind of, the whole notion of redevelopment is, it's made based on metrics made at the time. In the 1950s, if they saw this, they would say, oh my goodness, we got it, we nailed it, look at this. So that's not the freeway down there, that's 4th Street. The freeway is off in the distance. It's basically a giant off-ramp. So this looks like a giant overpass over in highway but it's just a little bitty overpass over little bitty 4th Street. So clearly all of the office use up here was centered around people getting here by the automobile. Pretty much everything up here is sitting on parking. I'm pretty sure we're on top of parking now. And it looks like they got water in the old water features again. So I'm not quite sure how to get down there, but I think that's parking under there. So this is essentially a break area for the several hundred office workers in this building. This is like the safest place on the planet here. So it looks like we're at street level with the Bonaventure, but really we're way up in the air. So we'll call this a uh, corporate cliff because this is the edge of the hill, but this is all terraformed to hell. So I'm sure if we get downstairs and look up, we'll be able to see I think this is just a big giant parking podium that we're on top of, but look at this goes to show that you can hide parking. This must be the smoking area. moments of serenity around here. It's crazy. So that's the, the YMCA. See, it's weird. There's like the hilltop theoretically over there. And then it just goes to this underground parking garage that goes onto the street. So there's lots of parking under this hotel and I guess they just wanted parking, 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 parking. So the rest of our, our trip today is going to be searching for pedestrian bridges 
and what would have become and you know what I just noticed over there on the freeway is a hulking timber apartment block destined to be the slums of the future but it's got a bridge over the street so the bridge off in the distance is obviously something that's meant to keep you away from the riffraff whereas the one closer to this is probably a little bit more noble intended because people getting on that freeway right there are kind of crazy and crossing those streets is a challenge So yes, that's the, over there is the plaza and that's the parking garage that is underneath. It's massive. I mean, look at all those lanes of traffic. How many cars? This future cityscape that you see here, in order to work, would have to be just full of financial paper pushers. This is apparently the central plant for some of the utilities in the area, some of the adjacent buildings. It's owned by a power company, I believe. But it's also on the edge of this piece of land right here, which is already got people talking about the development of it. So let's see, let's look at the size of the lot. So for the time being, it's uh, let's just leave it a park until something's for sure. But it's right next to the Metro Regional Connector and the newest member of the Downtown LA Pedestrian Bridge Association. So before the Broad Museum, this area was a complete dead zone. It was a dearth. This street right here is basically just a really quick way to get to the freeway because the 101 on ramps down there. So what they're saying is that this piece of land is big enough for high density development. And I would say that that is probably very true. So yeah, now that I see that there's trees in there and stuff, I can see that it is kind of a decent sized piece of land. So I just saw a picture the, just a couple days ago where where Flower Street continues up in a straight path. So there's several bridges over Flower Street and Flower Street used to go straight through, which is now a condominium building, I believe. So it looks like I'm entrenching on their private property. 
So that's the amenity deck there. This gigantic plaza. Crazy use of the space though. So someone was clearly working overtime on the master plan for this. Imagine in the 1960s, this would have been pretty cool. That was the era of the Jetsons and all that. So it's very apparent that some of these proposals is definitely futuristic. Going over Figueroa. Not quite sure what's over here. I'm pretty sure it's nothing. So that's Fig. It's just a little after rush hour right now. You can still tell. There's a mad frenzy. Check out these people making these turns. Nobody's acting crazy right now, but when you're a pedestrian down there, it's kind of horrifying. Do you think any of those cars making a right turn there are looking paying attention to anything other than getting on the freeway? That was a pretty pleasant leap over the street so there's not much on this side of the street so let's go back across so it's weird these buildings share amenities with a public space or at least a semi-public space pathway so the rumor is let's see the rumor is is that these were built remember the people mover at Disneyland they wanted to have these autonomous vehicles the lore is that these structures or at least some of these structures or one of them was built with that concept so that it could be retrofitted. So might this be a little roundabout station where your little pod could get assigned to go to a different part of downtown? I don't know, but I'm sure the local newspaper covered it extensively at the time because they had to be selling a narrative. I mean, what the hell were they doing over here? So that's the 3rd Street Tunnel right there. Very busy 3rd Street Tunnel today. And there's the freeway on ramp. You know what, let's turn back. I got some that kind of pissed me off the other day and I didn't have my camera. I don't carry my camera with me everywhere because it's kind of a pain in the ass when you have animals. So you got this. This guy looks like he's from the fucking 1980s. How you doing, dude? Pretty good, thanks. Come on. God, people, people love these steps. So yeah, that was a, a taste of the future that never happened. We never got to got a chance to walk elevated 
above the masses. So we're going to step back in time and go back to the old-fashioned way of crossing the street, which is using the crosswalk. So it's crazy. So right here's the sidewalk. And then they're kind of like, nope, nope, nope. You gotta cross the street. So that kind of tripped me out. Another thing that tripped me out was that the, the crosswalks don't allow you to go unless you hit the button. So I don't know, I guess the bridge is a, a better alternative. So what's the opposite of a bridge? A tunnel. So this is before the dystopian 1970s and 80s version of downtown LA. This is more old school from when the freeway was etched through the neighborhoods. They, ha they made certain little concessions, which is doing a fair to meh job of facilitating people to cross the freeway and be in the community. So this really bums me out. I did a, I, I made a, a quick video walking through here maybe two years ago. And yeah, there's people with stuff down there. But you could get through. Now it's like, all right, all right, all right, who cares? You know, I'm on this kick where I'm trying not to be bothered by anything at all. Your option now is to cross this three lane freeway on ramp. Oh my goodness. So sometimes you just have to admit, hey, there's no way to get over there. Actually, there is a way to get over there. So granted, I am making up reasons to be in the area, so I shouldn't be really irritated with this little conundrum here. I really just want to cross the street right now, and I don't want to go over there. Well, all right, I guess I will. But it is a little awkward. So because I have animals with short legs, I'm not going to do the futuristic way. I'm gonna do it this way again. Come on. So remember when we were up there in that green area, this is all parking lots. What's crazy is this hotel here, it's called the LA. I think it used to be like a Marriott or something. But you never even think about it over here. I wonder if it's uh, business travelers or if people, it's... Oh, it's the world trade. Oh boy, look at all that parking. Well, I like Las Vegas, so I'm gonna try this bridge to the hotel. And who knows, maybe there's a lobby bar. I've stayed at a couple of really cool dog-friendly hotels and it's a trip walking, walking your dogs in a nice hotel. So we're gonna roll the dice. Make sure I got my phone on me. 
No, I don't think the elevator works. All right, so we're gonna dub the bridge to nowhere our first, but probably not our last. So we got this parking garage neatly abuts onto, holy crap, there's people loitering here. So here's the beautiful, holy crap, there's people everywhere. I did not bring the right camera for this occasion. talking gibberish. Check this out. This was my first adventure to Orange County when I was 16 on the OCTA. So I think we're going to skip this bridge here because that's going in the wrong direction and focus on this bridge which will hopefully get us into the hotel undetected. Okay, so no bridge. It's like Brady Bunch era stuff. Very mid-century.
Dear God, the dystopia. I can't take it. So, another parking garage. It's surprising how many cars are actually in there. So the Bonaventure gets the prize for the most pedestrian overpasses that connects it to the rest of the neighborhood away from these nasty cars. This bridge is heavily used in the day for people going to lunch from all these office buildings in the area. Well, there you have it. That's uh, most of the downtown LA pedestrian bridges. We're back on the flats. Still a lot of parking. I had to ask myself, do stairs count as bridge? <laughs> 